You mentioned that uh, a theory of everything may be quite difficult to come by. A theory of everything broadly defined, meaning like truly a theory of everything. Yeah. But let's look at a more narrow theory of everything, which is that what the way it's used in often in physics is a, a theory that unifies our current uh, laws of physics, yeah. uh, general relativity, uh, quantum field theory. Do you have uh, thoughts on this dream of a, of a theory of everything in physics? How close are we? Is there any promising ideas out there in your view? Well, it would be nice to have. <laughs> <laughs> it would be aesthetically pleasing. Uh, Will it be useful? No, probably not. Well, I'm, I, I shouldn't. It's dangerous to say that, but uh, probably not. I think we uh, not not in certainly not in the uh, foreseeable future. Uh, maybe to understand it, black holes. Yeah, but that's that's yes, maybe to understand black holes, but that's not useful <laughs> in my book. And and well, not only I mean only to understand it's 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 worse of course you know it's not useful in the sense that we're not going to be basing any technology anytime soon on black holes but it's it's more severe than that i would say it's that the kinds of questions about black holes that we can't answer within the framework of existing theory uh are ones that are not going to be susceptible to astronomical observation in the foreseeable future. There are questions about very, very small black holes when uh, when quantum effects come into play or uh, uh, so that black holes are uh, you know not not black holes they're 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 emitting Hawk well, this discovery of Hawking called Hawking radiation, which for, Astronomical black holes is a tiny, tiny effect that's no one have, no one has ever observed. It's a prediction that's never been checked. So like supermassive black holes, that doesn't apply. No, no. the The predicted rate of radiation from those black holes is so tiny that it's absolutely unobservable and is overwhelmed by all kinds of other effects. Uh, so, uh, so it's not practical in the sense of technology. It's not even practical in the sense of. Uh, uh, application to astronomy the, the we our existing theory of uh, general relativity and quantum theory and our theory of the the different fundamental forces is perfectly adequate to all pro all problems of uh technology for sure uh and almost all problems of astrophysics and cosmology that appear except with the with the notable exception of the extremely early universe if you want to ask mm. what happened before the big bang or what happened right at the big bang uh so, which would be a great thing to understand of course uh yes we don't but uh, but what about uh, the engineering question so if we look at uh, space travel so uh I, I think you've spoken with him, uh, Eric Weinstein. Oh, yeah. Really, um, uh, you know, he says things like, we, we want to get off this planet. His intuition is almost a uh, motivator for the engineering project of space exploration. In order for us to crack this problem of becoming a multiplanetary species, we have to solve the physics problem. His intuition is like, if we figure out this, what he calls the source code, which is like, <laughs> like, like, well, f like a theory of everything might give us clues on how to start hacking the fabric of reality, like getting shortcuts, right? It might. I can't say that, you know, I can't say that it won't, but I can say that in the 1970s and early 1980s, we achieved huge steps in understanding matter, uh, QCD. Uh, much better understanding of the weak interaction, uh, much under better understanding of quantum mechanics in general, and it's had minimal uh, uh, minimal impact on technology. on rocket design, on propulsion, certainly on rocket design, on anything, any technology whatsoever. And now we're talking about much more esoteric things, and 
since I don't know what they are, I can't say for sure that they won't affect technology, but I'm very, very skeptical that they, they would affect technology. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the, because you know, the, to access them, you need to very exotic circumstances to make new kinds of particles with high energy. You need accelerators that are you know, it's very expensive, and you don't produce many, many of them, and so forth. You know, well, it's just uh, it's a pipe dream, I think. Yeah, about space exploration. Yes, I'm not sure exactly what he has in mind, and uh, but uh, to me, uh, it's more a problem of. of I don't know, something between biology and oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, maybe a little AI in and there. and information processing. Yeah. What you mean? How should I? I think human bodies are not well adapted to space. Yeah. Even Mars, or even you know, which is the closest thing to a kind of human environment that we're going to find anywhere close by. Uh, very, very difficult to maintain humans on Mars, uh, and going to be you know very expensive and very, you know very unstable. And but I think the process. However, uh, if we take a broader view of what it means to bring human civilization outside of the Earth. If we're satisfied with, you know, sending minds out there that we can converse with, and actuators, and in, that that yeah. we can in, uh, 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 manipulate, and sensors that we can get feedback from, I think that's that's where it's at, yeah, that's <laughs> and for sure. I think that's so much so much more realistic, and uh, and I think that that's the long-term future of uh, space exploration. It's not hauling human bodies all over the place. I mean, that's, that's, that's just silly. <laughs> well, it's, it's possible that it's human bodies. Um, so you, like you said, it's a biology problem. What's possible is that um, we extend human lifespan in some way. Just it, well, it, we have to look at a bigger picture. It could be just like you're saying, by sending robots with actuators and kind of extending the the our limbs or, but it could also be extending some aspect or, of our minds to yeah, information it all could those be kinds and it could be cyborgs it could be uh it could be now we're talking <laughs> not getting fun it could be you know it could uh, it could be uh human brains or cells that realize something like human brain architecture uh within uh, uh Within artificial environments, you know, shells, if you like, that that are more adapted to the conditions of space, and uh, that yeah, so that that's entire man machine hybrids, as well as sort of remote uh, outposts that we can communicate with. I think yeah, I think those those will happen. And uh, yeah, yeah, to that, me, the, there's some sense in which, as opposed to understanding the physics of. Uh, the, the 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 fundamental fabric of the universe i think getting to the physics of life the physics of intelligence the yes. physics of consciousness will the physics of information uh that that yeah. uh that, that brings uh from which yeah. life emerges that will allow us to do space exploration yeah i uh, well i think physics in the larger sense has a lot to contribute here yeah not the physics of finding fundamental new laws in the new sense law. of uh, you know another quark or axions even <laughs> the, the, the uh, but uh, uh, physics in the sense of you know physics has a lot of experience in analyzing complex situations and analyzing new states of matter and devising new kinds of instruments that do clever things we you know we, the, 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 the physics in that sense has enormous amounts to contribute to uh, this kind of endeavor. But I don't think that looking for a so-called theory of any everything has much to do with it at all.